When I see people talking online about tech stacks, I always just cringe because people are so dogmatic and religious about what's the best. You see these discussions like TypeScript is objectively better than JavaScript. Everyone needs to switch from C++ to Rust because Rust is just better. All I think when I see these discussions is these are a bunch of amateurs. Because if you haven't learned by now that everything is a trade-off, then what are you doing? Like, what have you been doing this whole time? <laughs> you can have an opinion on what you like, but in almost every context, your opinion is completely irrelevant. And I'm gonna kind of make a case for why that is. And if you find yourself on one side or another, or especially posting about these things, then you, maybe you should stop doing that. <laughs> so first things first, if you work in a large company, which tech stack is probably not gonna be your choice. You're gonna join, things are gonna be written in a certain language. And then any major refactors, especially from language to language, are going to be requiring a special reason for a use case, or they're gonna to be top down from the CTO. So the more you complain about something being bad, you're just gonna annoy people because you don't have a say anyway. I think people discount a little bit too easily also that if you've been writing for something for five years or even 10 years, then you're just gonna be faster implementing that code. And speed is something that software engineers often forget because they get paid anyway. But if you consider it from the organizational perspective, you're asking for company time. And there's gotta be a good reason to take what is quite literally company money for you to work slower on something that you've deemed better. But this slowing down or even learning from scratch time cost, it's not just true on the individual level, it's true for the entire population. So let's say you write a new app in some completely arbitrary thing. Like, I mean, Svelte is getting popular, but maybe you write it in Svelte and then Elixir on the back end. Let's say you're going out in hiring additional people for the team. You're hiring someone to maintain it. How many people can actually be maintaining that <laughs> effectively from day one? They're gonna have to grok not just all your code, but also the peculiar, unfamiliar syntax. And to say that that is not gonna take significantly more time, it's just, it is. <laughs> Next, to speak in such absolute terms, as I said earlier, is it's just foolish because even in the JavaScript TypeScript discussion, TypeScript is not objectively better. In fact, prior to JavaScript and Python existing, there were exclusively static types. So we have to think why were dynamic types or no types invented to prototype faster. So in the context of prototyping, even in some cases making changes, even if they are a little bit less safe, JavaScript is better. And JavaScript has been the standard for a very long time. And okay, there were some bugs, but it still worked. So if you contextualize it even beyond the technical trade-offs, what are the business trade-offs to doing a full TypeScript refactor? You're taking company time that could be spent implementing new features. And what is actually the user gonna care about? Maybe you get a five minute outage due to a runtime error and your uptime is 99.8% instead of 99.9. .9. Is the average user gonna care about that more when they probably didn't even experience it or not having their new feature that they wanted. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer here. Maybe you're doing airplane driving software or uh, embedded systems or whatever it is. You're not gonna be writing that in dynamic types anyway, but I think you get my point. TypeScript and JavaScript is not a discussion you can have in a vacuum. Just making a tech stack your identity is just the most cringe thing ever. I don't think I need to explain this. Even if you are tweeting that Angular is garbage for engagement, it's just cringe. Because when you put this guy in a real life situation that's not Twitter or YouTube, no one likes that guy. The, the PMs don't like him because he's always complaining or saying we need a refactor when it's not needed. The engineers don't like him because he wants to implement all these, you know, generics in TypeScript. Oh, there's this new cool thing that we could do where it's like we change all this code and now you have to relearn this. So, so you're asking engineers to, to use mental bandwidth to read your shitty new shiny syntax instead of writing it just the, the classic old way. Now you might say to me, okay, organization, fine. But what about for personal projects? And I think you really have to answer the question, are you trying to build something useful or are you trying to learn a new tech stack for whatever reason? Are you really going to 
use gRPC instead of REST on a brand new web app and also add five microservices on the back end? Or are you just gonna type everything in one file so you don't have to have 10 tabs open? That's a question only you can answer. Anyway, the point of this video is if anyone is talking in absolutes rather than trade-offs, just ignore them.